So I'm Melanie King and I'm an artist based in Ramsgate. Um, I've been in Ramsgate for about a year before that I was in Margate um, and I am doing a PhD at the Royal College of Art which is about astronomy and um, is in fine arts and um, I did a master's in art and science at Central St Martins and before that I studied fine art but I've always been interested in science. Um, so I'm going to show you a few projects today um, that are kind of part of the projects that I'm doing. Um, so I'm really interested in my main PhD work, thinking about the light that has travelled for thousands, if not millions of years before reaching photosensitive film. So I'm really looking at the materiality of the film, the materiality of the uh, stars themselves and kind of really looking into that connect those connections more deeply um, but as part of that research I've also been looking at different types of um, stars and different types of wavelengths so the first thing that I'm going to show is a pulsar oscillograph and um, so if you know what an oscilloscope is um, it's a uh, it's an object which visualizes sound. Um, and so I, what I wanted to do was to kind of make a room sized um, oscilloscope uh, just by taking apart the composite bits. And um, so I've made quite a few oscillograph installations and they're all made in a different way. So this was the first one that I did. So I had an ultraviolet laser, which was pointing at a mirror um, on a speaker and when I played the um, pulsar sounds and I say pulsar sounds meaning that um, there was some pulsar data that was sonified by some scientists so I used that data and played that through the speaker and as the speaker um, vibrated the mirror moved up and down and um, you can see the kind of installation shots here and then it was projected onto a piece of phosphorescence um, so I was really interested in making um, these stars, this, these wavelengths that are coming from the stars more visible and more, um, more tangible um, so I really like this idea of having like a room sized installation where you could hear the sounds of the pulsar and you could see um, the kind of vibration that I was making. So these are some examples that it changes quite rapidly and it changes quite a lot depending on the, uh, yeah, on, on the pulsar sound that you're playing. So yeah, that was, that was quite fun. Um, but because if you can see here, there's a mirror, it's not, it was originally stuck to the speaker and then I let it be um, kind of able to move around and it was a little bit, it wasn't really working very well. Um, so I decided to change some aspects of that. And while I was doing that, I also got some photosensitive paper as you might have guessed with the analog film, I'm really interested in um, analog photography and that's the main part of my work. Um, so I held up some photographic paper in place of the phosphorescent paper that I showed before and the laser drew, basically drew into the photographic paper. Um, so I've actually got these up on my wall at the moment um, where I am right now and yeah these are the kind of photographic, analog photographic uh, results of that experiment. <laughs> So I did that in a dark room and then um, developed it as usual. And then I went to a really amazing place called um, the Laboratory for Dark Matter Research, which is in Bullaby in North Yorkshire. And that was in 2017. So I went to um, the lab, which is about a kilometer underground. Um, and it's you go down into the mine where the laboratory is. Um, with the miners that are working there. They're mining um, potash, I think, and salt. Um, and then there's some amazing um, cars that are under the ground. 
Um, it's kind of like a full full roads that go for nine miles under the North Sea. It's incredible. Um, and yeah, they have the dark matter detector in the um, laboratory because um, basically that's where the cosmic rays coming from space can't reach. So they can have a really sensitive detector down there. Um, so that was incredibly fascinating. Um, and then basically when um, we went to the laboratory, I'm just gonna skip forward a few slides. Um, this is the dark matter detector. And this was where I got some of the data. So using that data, I then made um, a phosphorescent disc, which was spinning. Um, and it was using a mirror ball motor at the back of the phosphorescent disc. And it's a disc that's covered in uh, yeah, phosphorescent paint, which I made myself with some phosphorescent powder. Um, and then I had a laser, which was attached to a solenoid. And the solenoid responded to um, the sonified data that I had, um, and that moved up and down. But um, yeah, that was that was kind of an improvement on the last one because it was slightly more controllable. Um, but the solenoid kept pushing the laser too far and flipping it over, so it still wasn't perfect. Um, so I decided to do another installation later on which I'm gonna show you now. Um, so in, uh, in 2018 and 2019, I um, was working on a project with the European Commission. It's the Joint Research Lab um, in Ispra in Italy. And um, basically the brief was to go to Italy and go around all different amazing laboratories and find a scientist to collaborate with. Um, so in that journey, I went to an amazing uh, laboratory where they'd built a house, si uh, basically a, hu a whole house, and they had a laboratory that shook the house and it was a way of testing buildings, um, yeah, to test how they would react to earthquakes. And then there was another um, laboratory, which is all about car charging, so we got to learn quite a lot about um, the developments that are happening now in terms of car charging. Um, and then there was also a kind of satellite uh, testing place, which was really fascinating. But after all of that, I, um, I met someone who was working on quantum entanglement. So I'm going to, from my artist perspective, <laughs> try and explain what we're looking at at the moment. So this is Kostas Kutsumitros. Um, this is his laboratory and in the laboratory he's um, he's got a laser going through a crystal so it goes into two beams I don't know if you can see my um, my mouse here and then the two beams are um, pointing towards the photon detectors at the back um, and then he has uh, kind of a data output on each, uh, yeah, on each detect on each photon detector. And what he's doing is he's trying to determine if the data is different. Um, so theoretically, the beams are entangled because they come from one beam. So that's my artistic <laughs> explanation of his incredibly detailed research. Um, but I what I did in the following installation was to uh, sonify that data and then um, and basically using the wavelength and the wave height um, and then make two oscillographs using that. Um, I just also wanted to show you some pictures of the lab because they're really cool. So this is the same table with the photon detectors and the crystals. Um, but with the lights on. And yeah, I spent about a day or two in his lab kind of researching more about his work. And that's how I tend to work as well as an artist. I tend to do artists in residence with different laboratories and different observatories and things like that. Um, and then kind of try and collaborate with the scientists themselves, kind of thinking about their interests and perspectives. Um, 
I can't exactly remember this. He explained this whole thing about this uh, yo-yo, but I have no idea. No, it's lost in my memory, I'm afraid. But it was incredibly interesting. Um, so this is the third oscillograph. Um, so there was two of these, and the idea was that the viewer watching them could try and detect the differences between the data. Theoretically, both of the oscillographs would look the same, so it was up to the viewer to detect the differences. And there are some because I think the experiment isn't particularly... Um, it's not the, at the right stage that cost um, cost us, the scientists wanted it to be. Um, so yeah, that was really interesting. And this time the, um, the laser was pointed at a drum and um, which it was very, very incredibly lo-fi, but it worked the best, which is funny. Um, so it was a biscuit tin with a swimming cap on top. And then there was a tiny little mirror right in the middle of the swimming cap. Um, and then there was a speaker inside the biscuit tin. So when the speaker played the sonified data, um, the vibrations were very minute um, of the, on the swimming cap. And that moved the mirror a very small amount. And then the laser was fixed using a helping hand and pointed at the mirror. So it was a lot more finely tuned and it was a lot more controllable and that was the best. Um, and the oscillograph um, projections were also incredibly uh, detailed as well, they're much finer. So that's kind of an installation that I'm quite happy with now. And the phosphorescent disc again was, they both were spinning on a mirror ball and this time they were made in resin so again, the, the kind of absorption of light onto the phosphorescence was much finer. Um, yeah, and that was, that was the uh, culmination of that. And I'm hoping to develop it even further in future. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'll keep looking into. And again, this is when I was testing it in the studio um, and trying out different uh, projection uh, distances. And then I'm gonna talk about the all sky camera, but um, it's something that I have been experimenting with and haven't really got to work just yet. Um, for, mainly for logistical reasons because of where I lived um, and not being able to leave it out for a long period of time. So I'm gonna actually go to the, um, the picture first. So it's basically something that you can find on Instructables and I am quite new to all of this technology. So um, I wanted to try something that somebody else had built first. So it's essentially um, a Raspberry Pi, which is um, put into an astronomy camera, which you'd usually put on like astronomy CCD camera, which would usually put directly into the telescope eyepiece. And then there's a very small wide angle lens here. Um, and then, yeah, you have an, you're using the internet um, capacity of the Raspberry Pi to speak to the program, which has already been built um, by the uh, designer. And then it gets encased in uh, some kind of casing. So the best thing to use is a um, CCTV dome. So that's what I've used for my one. And then you can put it in some kind of weatherproof casing. So this, this isn't my one, this is somebody else's. Um, I couldn't find a picture of mine for some reason, but I've got a long rectangle piece which encases all of my Raspberry Pi um, stuff. I put a battery pack in mine just so that I could leave it out without it being plugged into the mains. Um, and yeah, this is me testing it in my studio in Ramsgate, um, which is usually a dark room, hence the uh, enlargers over there. Um, but yeah, this is the kind of view that it takes. And the idea is that you make time lapses of the night sky over a long period of time. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. If you want to find out more about my uh, website, because uh, I've got lots of different kinds of projects on there, mostly about science and astronomy, then you can go onto this web page here. 
I also run a few different collectives. So I run Super Collider, which is an art and science collective, Lumen Studios, which is an astronomy and art collective, and London Alt Photo, which is a um, analog and experimental photography collective. So thanks very much. Um, I hope you found that interesting and please let me know if you have any questions.